every family has disagreements. Most fights between family members are mundane and easily moved past, but others are more troubling and have dire and disturbing consequences. What is up, Iwu crew? Today, we are covering a case about tragedy, love gone wrong, and family dysfunctions that turned deadly. When Christy first met Jason Sheets, she knew that he was meant to be the love of her life. They were quite young at the time, as they both grew up only 15 minutes away from one another. Christy was born and raised in Decatur, Alabama, and Jason lived and attended high school nearby in Trinity. Both friends of Christy and Jason attest that when their two worlds collided, there was no going back. Christy and Jason were simply meant to be together. And so, not long after their first meeting, Christy and Jason began dating. As per any good love story, the two fell hard and fast for each other and both dreamed of their future life together. Eventually, Jason proposed to Christy and the two were married, marking the beginning of the next chapter of their love story. Little did they know that the love they shared was far too good to be true. Not long after getting married, the Sheets started a family of their own. Christy and Jason welcomed their two daughters, Madison and Taylor, into the world five years apart. Though the two girls remained close during and after their childhood, despite their age difference. During the most developmental years of the girls' lives, Christy and Jason decided to move to a quaint suburb in Houston. Christy Sheets was an avid Facebook user, especially when it came to posting pictures of her and her family. Even when times were tough, Christy was always adamant on maintaining the curated image associated with her seemingly happy family. Taylor and Madison's lives were well documented to say the least and were often plastered all over Christy's Facebook wall for others to see. Their youngest daughter, Madison, loved babysitting part-time and took her high school academics seriously. While their eldest daughter, Taylor, was a full-time teacher at a local child daycare center who had every desire to become a professional artist. Together, the two appeared to be well-behaved children who loved their parents dearly. Everyone who knew her understood that Christy believed her life's mission was to be the kindest mother she could be, and friends of the family knew Jason as a loving, devoted father and husband. Unfortunately, sometimes love isn't enough. In early 2012, Christy's beloved grandfather passed away, sending Christy into a state of depression unlike anything she had ever experienced before. Her grandfather had been one of her idols in life and had helped shape her into the woman she was as an adult. His loss cut deep for Christy because it was like losing a part of herself. If Christy believed that her grandfather's death was the worst form of loss she would ever experience, she realized all too soon that she had been completely wrong. Before the grieving wounds from her grandfather's death could properly heal, Christy's mother passed away just a few months after her grandfather had. The combination of losing two of the people she had loved the most in the world was too much for Christy to handle and cope with. Her mother was one of her best friends, someone she could confide in and reveal all her secrets to. Both of these deaths sent Christy into a spiral of sorts, one that resulted in her depression worsening and her relationships with family and friends growing more strained as the months passed by. Over the course of four years following the deaths of her grandfather and mother, Christy became unrecognizable to those closest to her. Her moods changed frequently, her appetite was non-existent, and she even attempted to take her own life on three separate occasions. Though her attempts to do so were thwarted by her husband's intervention, Christy was nonetheless suffering in a way that no one around her seemed to understand, not even her own family. Dealing with death is a complex experience that is often felt in completely different ways by different individuals. Unfortunately for Christy, time did not help to heal her wounds. When Christy's grandfather and mother had first passed away, 
Jason tried to console his wife to the best of his ability. In many ways, Christy felt as though Jason could not comprehend the constant pain she was in or the way that she mourned as a result of losing such meaningful people in her life. By June of 2016, Christy and Jason were ready to call it quits on their relationship after 20 years of marriage. Christy believed that Jason was disregarding her feelings, while Jason felt as though Christy was making it impossible for him to get through to her. After endless arguments and a noticeable lack of affection between the two, their marriage had soured to the point of no return. Throughout their relationship, Christy never had a history of being violent or unstable. However, after her mother and grandfather's death, something inside of her seemed to break. Christy had been in and out of mental health facilities on three separate occasions, and her family had even become accustomed to making service calls for authorities to come to their home in fear that Christy would do something to harm herself. Christy had been taking several different medications for depression and anxiety, though no one but Christy knows just how strictly she may have actually been following her medication regimen. Despite the resources at her fingertips, nothing seemed to help Christy. Jason said that Christy would often drink heavily to cope, and alcohol could not have mixed well with any medications she was taking. Christy felt all alone in the world with no one to understand her. On the afternoon of June 24, 2016, Christy Sheets made an irrevocable decision that would alter the course of her life forever, as well as that of those around her. A few days earlier, Christy had gotten into an argument with her and Jason's eldest daughter, Taylor, who was planning to get married to her fiance just days later. During the argument, Christy stated that she intended to ground Taylor and prevent her from seeing her fiancé. Jason had overheard and come to Taylor's defense, insisting that Christy could not punish her 22-year-old daughter in such a patronizing way just days before her wedding. Christy was noticeably enraged by the course of the argument and was set off even further when Jason refused to take her side. Ultimately, when Christy stormed off, Jason did not think much of it. Little did he know the horror that would occur. A few days later, Christy notified Jason and the girls that they would all be having a family meeting and sit down to discuss a few things that were on Christy's mind. Going into the meeting, Jason assumed that Christy wanted to address the fact that the two of them were planning on getting a divorce, as they hadn't told Taylor and Madison yet or perhaps she wanted to follow up on the argument she and Taylor had earlier. Unfortunately, nothing could have prepared Jason for what Christy had planned. As the family sat down for their discussion, they noticed something was particularly off with their mother. Before Christy spoke, Jason braced himself for what was likely going to be an emotional conversation. He prepared to comfort his daughters over the matter if need be. Jason expected that Christy would begin the conversation directly, avoiding any unnecessary tiptoeing around the subject. But instead, Christy pulled out a gun. In that moment, Jason understood that the meeting had nothing to do with their divorce and everything to do with Christy reaching a breaking point. What came next shocked everyone. Jason, frozen in horror, watched as Christy pointed the gun, one she had gotten from her grandfather, not at him, but directly at their daughter, Taylor. And then, she fired. Jason jumped up and rushed to his eldest daughter, while shouting for Madison to run for the front door. Jason threw himself over Taylor and screamed in shock at Christy. He desperately tried to pull Taylor up and get her away from the nightmare occurring in the foyer of his home. Instead of escaping, Madison managed to call 911 in the midst of the chaos. But just before Madison could make it out the door, Christy managed to fire another shot directly at her youngest daughter. Though the 911 call did connect, the dispatcher was unable to have a conversation with Madison. Screams on the other end of the line can be heard as Jason, Madison, and Taylor beg Christy not to shoot at them anymore. Just a forewarning, the 911 call you are about to hear may be disturbing for some viewers as the strain of the victim's voices is evident throughout. Stop 
the 911. Madison struggled through the front door, but she collapsed on the welcome mat and drew her last breath. Taylor and Jason managed to run into the middle of the street in front of the house by the time Christy caught up with them. At this point during the attack, Taylor was also able to attempt a 911 call, in which more screaming is heard before Taylor's cries are stifled and the call ends. Hello? What is the address? Ma'am? As Jason braced for a bullet to hit him, he watched as Christy once again fired at Taylor. Then she turned back toward the front door of the home the two shared for years and went inside. Jason and the injured Taylor managed to make it to the end of the cul-de-sac in Christy's absence and was relieved to learn that a few of their neighbors had called the police after hearing the gunshots. The sudden war zone on their quiet neighborhood street was absolutely terrifying to those in the area. One neighbor reported hearing Jason shout out the plea, don't do this, there are kids. Another neighbor who made the 911 call can be heard explaining to the dispatcher that Christy appeared to have gone back inside to reload her gun. She's going inside the house now. Hopefully it's not getting any more bullets because she looks like she's going to look for more bullets. Okay. All right, stand on the line. She's coming back again. She's coming back again. Apparently she has bullets now. Okay. As Christy Sheets exited the house once more, intent on firing another round of bullets into her family, police were already making their way down the cul-de-sac. Ignoring the looming presence of police officers and detectives alike, Christy shot Taylor once more before turning her attention to the wide-eyed cops. Stay on the line. Oh, she shot her again. She shot her she again. She shot her again? Yes. From the back, she was trying to run. Officers surrounded any possible escape paths, preventing Christy from running away from the brutal crime scene she had created. The police promptly ordered Christy to drop her weapon before anyone else got hurt. Christy Sheets simply smiled, ignored the order, and eerily locked eyes with her husband. Before she could finish whatever thought had been going through her brain at that moment, an officer fired exactly one shot at Christy, killing her where she stood. I can hear bullets, and she's laying down on the floor now. I'm so sorry you had to see that, sir. I'm sorry you had to see that. Taylor Sheets was quickly airlifted to Memorial Hermann Hospital in the hopes that she could be spared despite having sustained three gunshot wounds in various parts of her body. Unfortunately, Taylor was past the point of saving. With one fell swoop, three-fourths of the Sheets family were completely wiped out in one unthinkable series of events. Taylor had graduated with honors from Lone Star College Sci Fair just a year prior to her murder. Madison was on track to enter her senior year at Seven Lakes High School, and Jason was left to mourn his entire family because of Christie's irrevocable choice. Perhaps the most peculiar part of Christie's attack on her own family is that she had reportedly had ample time to open fire on Jason, yet she had intentionally chosen not to. Though that choice seemed strange at first, it was nonetheless deliberate. The seemingly perfect family Jason had once been a part of was reduced to nothing but himself. Jason understood that this had been Christie's goal all along, to make him suffer. Christie had always felt as though Jason was never able to understand the unbearable loss she had experienced in the wake of the deaths of her grandfather and mother. So, in the most twisted way, she decided to make him understand what it felt like to lose the people you love the most. On that fateful day in June of 2016, Jason Sheets became a victim of an unthinkable crime, one that cost him his entire family and one that he's going to have to live with for the rest of his life. Jason had to be taken to the hospital after the incident, not to be treated for an injury, but because he had been so broken by what happened. Christy Sheets ultimately got what she wanted out of the murder of her own two daughters, 
and did not have to live to face the consequences of her actions. Perhaps the only closure Jason will ever have is knowing that Christy can never take anyone else from him.